Good morning. Now this week I've been looking at messengers or messengers and their message and their, the message receivers um, and all very different ones going from uh, Gabriel to visiting Mary and uh, Nathan visiting David. We had Balaam and his donkey and yes, so we had the spies uh, coming to the Israelites. And today we've got uh, Peter and uh, Cornelius and his messengers. And uh, I'm calling it, are we willing to be someone's answer to prayer? Mm -hmm. Right, so we're going to read from Acts chapter 10, uh, starting from verse 1. At Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelius, a centurion in what was known as the Italian regiment. He and all his family were devout and God-fearing. He gave generously to those in need and prayed to God regularly. One day at about three in the afternoon, he had a vision. He distinctly saw an angel of God who came to him and said, Cornelius. Cornelius stared at him in fear. What is it, Lord? He asked. The angel answered, your prayers and gifts to the poor have come as a memorial offering before God. Now, send men to Joppa to bring back a man named Simon, who is called Peter. He is staying with Simon the Tanner, whose house is by the sea. When the angel who spoke to him had gone, Cornelius called two of his servants and a devout soldier who was one of his attendants. He told them everything that had happened and sent them to Joppa. About noon the following day, as they were on their journey and approaching the city, Peter went up on the roof to pray. He became hungry and wanted something to eat. And while the meal was being prepared, he fell into a trance. He saw heaven opened and something like a large sheet being let down to earth by its four corners. It contained all kinds of four-footed animals, as well as reptiles and birds. Then a voice told him, get up, Peter, kill and eat. Surely not, Lord, Peter replied. I I've never eaten anything impure or unclean. The voice spoke, spoke to him a second time. Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. This happened three times and immediately the sheep was taken back to heaven. While Peter was wondering about the meaning of the vision, the men sent by Cornelius found out where Simon's house was and stopped at the gate. They called out, asking if Simon, who was known as Peter, was staying there. While Peter was still thinking about the vision, the spirit said to him, Simon, three men are looking for you, so get up and go downstairs. Do not hesitate to go with them, for I have sent them. Peter went down and said to the men, I'm the one you're looking for. Why have you come? And the men replied, we have come from Cornelius the centurion. He is a righteous and God-fearing man who is respected by all the Jewish people. A holy angel told him to ask you to come to his house so that he could hear what you have to say. Then Peter invited the men into the house to be his guests. OK, so here we have Cornelius. He's a high ranking Roman um, officer. And he is going to be um, the first convert into the Christian church. Wow. You know, God hasn't just chosen any Gentile. This is one of the commanders of the enemies of the state. Wow. But yet, here is a man who dearly wants to know God. He does all he can. He prays. He gives to the poor. He tries to show his love for God by what he's doing. And not just him, 
but he includes his whole household. He's making sure they um, are fearing God. And uh, he wants them to, to try that. And, and even uh, other soldiers in his army. And because we have a devout soldier who, who is um, actually sent to Peter. So here he is, he's praying. Now, when he's praying, it is around the time when the evening sacrifice would be um, happening at the temple. And, and a lot of um, Jews would use that as a time of prayer, an hour of prayer. And here he is, he's following what the Jews would do as well. Um, yet he is excluded from them. But he is showing his commitment of what he wants to do. But isn't it amazing, though? Here he is. He's praying and an angel comes. Now, this shows how important the gospel message is and what a privilege it is for us to bring. Because an angel from the throne room of God comes to Cornelius not to give him the message, not to give him the gospel message. He tells him to go send for Peter, who will then give him the message. Wow. Not even one of the important angels is giving the message, but Peter has the privilege of doing that. Now, so that's Cornelius, and he doesn't ask too many questions. He is afraid. I mean, it is frightening seeing an angel, but he acts immediately. I'm going to get this Peter straight away. I want to know what God has to say to me. Wow. He's excited. He quickly gets these men together and sends them off to Peter and Joppa. Now, let's turn our focus on Peter. Now, here's Peter. He's one of our Christian leaders, the, the church leaders, one of Jesus' disciples. Wonderful Peter. And yet we can see how God is gradually helping him and teaching him. The first thing to notice is that he is staying with a tanner, Simon the tanner. Now already that is quite amazing because um, strict Jews would not be able to um, be with death and the uncleanness of you know, the tanners, it's, they have the animal skins, can't go near those, can't go near carcasses. Also, what they use as tan for, for, for preparing the leather. So, so they, that's something God is gradually teaching Peter, you know, this is Simon the tanner is a worthy man to go and stay with. But then he has this vision, this vision is this sheet of animals coming. And that's an interesting thing that God is saying, look, eat, eat what is shown you. And Peter looking at uh, what's in this sheet and it's all well, in, the, in the law, it would be called unclean. And he said, I can't eat any of that, Lord, you know, because it's unclean. But then God, the lawgiver, he's the one who's able to change the law. And he's saying, look, Let's take another perspective. I've told you to eat, so I, I reckon that's clean. I've decided that's clean. You can't call unclean what I've called unclean. I can change the law because I am the law giver. So do not call anything impure that God has made clean. So Peter thinks about this vision and why he's received it, and he ha but he hasn't long to think about it because there are Cornelius' messengers to tell him this is why it's come. And the story goes that um, Peter will go with them. But then there's a, a, the first thing that happens with those visitors straight away. Peter will eat with them. These are Gentiles, and we know that later on there's a story when um, Paul has to tell Peter off 
because he's, he starts not eating with Gentiles. But here he is. God has already said, these men, I've sent these men. You have to go with them. And the first thing he does is eat with them, a thing that Jews would not do. But God has told him to, and he's obeying. Now, are there lessons that we need to learn? Are there matters of principle that we're holding rigidly to when God is actually challenging them? May we humbly and prayerfully ask God to give us his heart, his eyes, and his love and grace. Because there are questions uh, that we are being brought as a church. We're brought as individuals. There are people that we wouldn't want to welcome into our church, but yet God says we should be welcoming and we should know love. But then it's how far do we welcome people? Do we welcome people unconditionally? Peter had never eaten with Gentiles. The very first thing he does is invite those men in and eats with them. He had held to that principle all his life, and yet he was willing, with God's guidance, to let that principle go. Yes, it is good to hold principle, but what is more important, the outward, what happens outwardly, or someone's soul? What is the most important thing to show people God's love and his, the gospel message, the forgiveness of, that Jesus has um, paid for on the cross? Is that more important? Is that more important than um, whether we let people do certain things in the church? Whether we allow certain people in? What is more important? A soul saved or some of these principles held on to? Lord God, we pray that if there's lessons we need to learn, if there's people who need to know your love in a special way, if there's people who need to hear the gospel in a way they haven't done before because of us so-called Christians sticking to our principles, Lord, we pray that you'll open our eyes, open our hearts, open our ears to what you would have to say to us. Lord, we pray that you'll lead us well, you'll guide us well. We pray that we won't be those who dig our heels in to lessons, against lessons you are teaching us. But we pray that we'll be those who are willing listeners to our God and his spirit. God bless you today. Thank you. And by his heart.